These days, I'm using three cameras specific to astrophotography. The Player One Uranus C, the Player One Ares M, and the Player One Xena M for my guiding camera. When I get to work on the second observatory, I also plan to get a Player One Sedna M for the small refractor. In addition, I have a Player One Phoenix 36mm filter wheel for the Player One Ares M camera. You probably noticed something they all have in common, Player One. Now, I didn't make this video because I get any kind of kickback from Player One. I don't work for Player One. I don't have any kind of deal or even promotion arrangement with Player One. I just like Player One. And I thought I would take a moment to explain why, because some people have asked, why are, all your, why are all your cameras Player One? Why are you always mentioning Player One? Well, not all my gear is Player One. Here you can see through the uh, IR standard mini camera that I keep in the observatory so I can observe the telescope through the night. You can see that all of my gear is not player one. I made the pier and the pier adapter is from Star Arizona. The mount is a Skywatcher EQ6R mount. The telescope is a Celestron and the narrowband filters and the filter wheel are Antlia and the LRGB filters are from ZWO. So it's not like I'm trying to make everything player one. I don't think player one even makes mounts at this time or filters. But there's a reason that my cameras and filter wheel are all player one. And here it is. It's, it's very simple. A couple of things. In terms of bang for your buck, you do get a little more with player one than from some of the competition. Well, most of the competition, really, in my opinion. For example, the player one Ares M uses the Sony 533 sensor and thus is very similar to the ZWO ASI 533. It has a lot of similarities, but if you look at the specs, you can see that player one has devised ways of pushing what the cameras deliver just a little bit harder, a little bit more. And the player one Uranus C camera, the little color camera that I use on the small refractor telescope uses the Sony 585 sensor. And it's the same deal. Uh, their competition has a camera that uses a similar sensor, but player one pushes the specs a little bit more. For example, the Ares M camera has a carbon fiber case, so it weighs a bit less. That allows your mount to be a bit more accurate and perhaps hold a bit more load if you need to put something else up there, like a mini PC or a, a dew heater controller. The player one Ares M, and to my knowledge, all of their cooled cameras have dew heater plates on the fronts of the cameras, or rather I should say on the fronts of the sensors so that cooling the camera won't result in dew buildup on the camera sensor at any time. The Ares M camera has a full well depth of 73K as opposed to the standard Sony ASI 533 sensor of 50K, which I think is also the full well depth noted on the competition. There's a 512 megabyte DDR3 buffer, which is also typically more than you'd get in the competition. And the camera comes with tilt plates for front and back. And it easily makes a flush flat attachment to the player one filter wheel with no light leaks. So in general, the tech that player one delivers, the bang for the buck is just a little more than the competition and it doesn't cost any more. But you know, that's still not the main reason that I go with player one cameras. Here's the real reason, customer service. I have had incredible experiences with customer service. Uh, so, for example, around two years ago, our home was devastated by Hurricane Fiona. There was an immense amount of damage and, you know, we're still repairing stuff around the house from Hurricane Fiona. That was the year I had decided to build the observatory and I had to put off building the observatory for over a year because of that. And anyway, months later, you know, I finally got to get back up into my lab, sit down, take stock of things and start to consider where to go from there. And I realized I had this Xena M camera, something like, I don't know, it was, I think it was six months after I had purchased it. And at the time, given the finances involved in repairing the house, I, I didn't know if or when I was going to be able to get back into astrophotography. And here I had this camera that was both four or $500 Canadian, and that might not normally be all that much, but when you're trying to rebuild your home after a natural disaster and every penny counts, it's a lot. I contacted Player One and told them I had this unopened Xena M package and our home had been devastated by, by Fiona and I just didn't know if I could do astrophotography anymore. And you know what? They offered to take it back way past the return time. They said, no problem. We understand you can send it back if you want. No, I didn't. Of course, I kept it. 
I decided to hell with it. I am going to go ahead and build that observatory and, and get my dreams working too. But I was, you know, I was always impressed that Player One was going to go the extra mile. They didn't ask anything. They didn't ask me to promote them or anything. They just were going to do that. And that's still not the main reason I always go with Player One. When I was finally able to set up the, the, the telescope on a mount outside, this was before I built the observatory. I just had it sitting on a mount on a tripod. I was using the little Williams Optics 81 millimeter refractor in the Uranus C uh, planetary camera. I had a few technical questions. It was the first time I was configuring that camera to that telescope. Contacted Player One technical support about those questions. They weren't, the camera was working fine. I just wanted to check on some specs. So I contacted Player One technical support thinking, well, if this is like my usual experience with many companies, maybe I'll hear back in a week. I'll just get the camera going best I can for now. You know, I heard back from Player One 12 hours later. And I want you to bear in mind, the time zone where the Player One office is, is exactly 12 hours from mine. So like I sent them off this email, I think it was around 10, 11 a.m. I heard back from them at morning their time. And so it was, if you, if you eliminate the time zone, it was as if I heard back from them almost instantly. They got right back with the right answers for the questions, very helpful. So then this December, Player One ran a sale on their cameras and I decided now's the time I'm going to finally get the Ares M and get my SCT out of mothballs. I had the SCT just living in storage in a closet in the house ever since the hurricane because I had to set it aside and focus on rebuilding the house. I'm going to finally get an Ares M camera and invest in a filter wheel and, and get that telescope up in my little observatory. So I ordered the Player One Ares M and the filter wheel, taking advantage of the sale that was going on at the time. Got it all set up. And the first night I was going to use the camera with the filter wheel it was a very cold night here in Atlantic Canada. And I, if memory serves, it was around minus 32 C that night. And the filter wheel wouldn't work. It was, it was too cold. It worked fine in the house. And so I actually measured the temperatures. The next day I took it outside and it was minus 14, 15 C during the day. And I checked it and it was working fine at those temperatures. And I watched and watched and it got to be a little stiff once it hit around minus 20 C. And by the time it hit minus 25 C, the, the filter wheel would really struggle. So I emailed Player One that evening with the information, gave them the, uh, the information on the temperatures at which it was having difficulty. Within an hour, I heard back from their CEO and their engineer. The engineer said he could make it work right then and there. And he remoted into my computer and updated the firmware on the Player One filter wheel, increasing the voltage in the filter wheel so that it would operate more reliably at lower temperatures. And then the CEO sent me an email saying that at no charge, they would manufacture and send me a special washer that would allow the filter wheel to work even better in the conditions specific to my very cold environment. Now, the story doesn't stop there. About a month, maybe two months ago, I'm sure all of you Nina users know Nina updated to version 3.0. And uh, when I saw it, I updated it. Everything seemed to be working great. I know we're all a little nervous whenever we see one of these updates because we're excited about the new features, but is everything going to continue working? And when the update happened, it, it was a big change for Nina. Almost all the drivers had to be updated and then everything seemed to be working fine. But after the update, I found that the camera was dropping frames. Well, not exactly dropping frames. The camera was working fine, but sometimes it was as if Nina couldn't process the data and it would the camera would shoot, but they wouldn't be processed through Nina and be saved on the hard drive. It was an easy fix. All I had to do was in Nina, log out of the camera and then log back in and it would work fine. But it was unpredictable. It usually happened every few hundred subs. I've taken to shooting many short subs these days and I couldn't predict it. So I would actually have to set an alarm to wake up every hour through the night and just double check the camera and make sure that the, the subs were still being recorded. Anyway, as soon as I discovered the problem, I contacted Player One. And once again, almost immediately, I heard back from their engineer who said that they were aware of the problem and were working on a new Player One driver for it, but they already had a new ASCOM driver updated to handle it. He sent me the link to it and then he said, can I go ahead and log into your camera and I'll update your firmware too and just run some checks on it. And so he did. He logged into the camera, promptly updated the firmware on the camera for me, and then spent three hours running system checks on it. Now that's why I get Player One. You cannot beat customer service like that. And I think it's a company worth supporting.
Great products, great technology, and a company that backs their products with customer service. You don't see a lot of that these days, and I know this video must sound like a paid advertisement. It is not paid, and Player One did not ask me to make it. I'm just telling you why I go with Player One and why you might want to give them a shot yourself. All right, have fun, thanks for watching, and get out there and shoot the sky.